Unlock the secrets of your body's chain. Ever wonder why knee pain often sends shockwaves up into the hips or down to the ankles? In this eye-opening video, we unravel the intricate connections within your body, revealing how knee discomfort can trigger a ripple effect of pain. Get ready to connect the dots and discover how to break free from the cycle of discomfort, ensuring every step you take is a step towards relief, wellness, mobilizing, and energizing. I'm Dr. Tammy Penhollow. Today, we're talking about patients who ask me, why, if I have pain in my knee, am I also getting pain in my hips or even down in my ankles? It's all connected. When we look at a joint problem, if somebody comes in complaining of knee pain, I always look at the joint above and the joint below. In this case, the hip and the ankle. Similarly, if we're talking about something in the upper extremity, if you have elbow pain, I'm gonna look at your shoulder and your wrist because there's this thing called a kinetic chain. Everything passes through. In a normal step, when you're walking, the foot strikes the ground, the force transmits up through the foot into the ankle, through the knee and up into the hip, continues into the lumbar spine. So if you have something wrong at any of those points, you can then get a ripple effect of pain translating above or conversely below. So in the knee specifically, oftentimes people start to get hip pain or ankle pain because of the injury in the knee. The body's pretty good at hiding some things, accommodating, compensating. But if you have something such as the IT band syndrome or from the ilium to the tibia, the tibia is the inside long bone of the lower extremity below the knee, then you can get pain in the two joints that it's connecting. So that connects the hip to the knee. So if that big, thick, wide fascia is injured, if there's inflammation, if there is a tear or an inflammatory process that's going on because you're doing some wear and tear. For example, you are running, you've got tight IT band, the stretching is just not working or the stretching is not there the way that it should be. For example, you're doing a little bit of a warm up and go out for your run and then you don't really cool down. You get in the car and you go back home or you're not taking care of rolling, foam rolling on that area to get out the tight areas, then you can get knee pain. You can have hip pain because the IT band is covering both of those. You can even get hip pain if you've got a meniscus tear in your knee. We've talked about the meniscus in the past. The meniscus is this cartilage that is inside the knee and there's a medial aspect. It's kind of a C-shaped medial meniscus or a C-shaped lateral meniscus. And if that's torn, then that causes inflammation around that medial aspect of the knee. The medial collateral ligament can also get some swelling around it and can be strained or sprained. The medial muscles or the inside muscles of the quads can get atrophied. Actually, they may have been the cause of the medial meniscus issue in the first place because there's some imbalance of the muscles and those quad muscles come up and they attach up in the front of the hip. So that's how we can get some hip pain. If we get some pain down into the ankle, it's often from the medial aspect. Again, if we've got something wrong in the medial part or the inside part of the knee, then you can get pain down into that medial part of your ankle. On the outside, we've got a fibular bone or this little tiny guy at the top here. And if we have a knee issue, such as a tendinopathy, we've talked about that in the past, where that is the ropey aspect of the muscle that then inserts on the bone. The tendon is the ropey aspect. In the hamstring in particular, then on that outside aspect, the, the lateral hamstring insertion points, then right at that fibular head, we can get some kind of wrapping, some twisting, some pulling, some tugging sensation. The fibula, then it, it becomes the outside of the ankle or the lateral aspect of the ankle. So that knee pain coming from the tendinopathy of the hamstrings can come down and create some ankle pain. 
all of this is a sign that there's some form of Im imbalance and that that kinetic chain or that motion chain that occurs as we translate force up through the foot, ankle, knee, into the hip, and then into the lumbar spine, that there's something wrong. There's an imbalance. We often address this acutely with things such as rest, taking some time off, identifying what's going on, stop the repetitive injury, stop the repetitive motion, give your body time to heal. Acutely using something such as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, if that's okay with your primary physician. For example, those with kidney issues or those with stomach ulcers often cannot have non-steroidals. Other people that can't have non-steroidals are people who are on very strong blood thinners. So that may not be the appropriate therapy, but resting, using something more topical, which is less likely to be absorbed into the system, such as a topical CBD, a topical non-steroidal, a topical lidocaine or other numbing patch. Stretching to make sure that you can reduce the amount of strain. For example, doing a nice warm up, then stretching the IT band, stretching at the ankles, stretching at the quads, stretching into the hamstrings so that it does not form a tendinopathy, does not then go on to form tears, does not then keep you out even longer, and does not put you in the operating room to repair those things. So those are some initial things. Others are to have a formal physical therapy evaluation, gait analysis, or watching your walk, doing a good exam and looking at muscles to see if there is some muscle imbalancing and then developing a program to strengthen specifically and rebalance those muscles. We use the M-Sculpt for that for some very high intensity but low risk of injury rebuilding of muscles. We can get 20,000 contractions in a 30 minute session can also look at the reason that the joint is painful in the first place. Is there a meniscus tear? Is there a collateral ligament tear? Is there a patellar tendon tear? Then you address that, however that may be. If it is something that is amenable to your body's own cells to treat it, or is it something that is an advanced lesion that's going to require an operation? Is it arthritis? Is it arthritis of the hip and the knee and the ankle, or is it just one of those joints that has arthritis? And do you have an advanced level of arthritis that is going to result ultimately in a joint replacement, or are you just this side of it and you've got the ability to use some non-operative or non-surgical approaches to that? But just know it's normal to evaluate the joint above and the joint below. It's normal to have pain from one area that can radiate up or radiate down because of the way the body works. It is that kinetic chain. It is that connectivity. So it's really important to keep an open mind and to find somebody that can look at things from the whole perspective and not just look at your knee because there may actually be something from the ankle that's causing that knee pain or something from the hip that's causing that knee pain. If you liked what you've heard today, please like, please subscribe, comment below. The question may end up being the topic of our next video. And for more information specifically about the knee, kneeboostnow.com. If you have knee pain and would like to learn more, I have a worksheet called five things to do now to reduce your knee pain within a week. Go to www.kneeboostnow.com to download it for free. I'd love to hear from you. So please like, subscribe, and comment below so I can help you get out of your knee pain.